So welcome to <laughs> this talk, Raining Over High Volume Debian Emails by Pablo Ariel Dubois. And go ahead. Hello. So we are here in Nicaragua where it rains. <laughs> and uh, where we're talking about what to do when you get, uh, uh, you have a waterfall of emails. Okay, so th this is a, a very, very short introduction before we, we, we go a little bit uh, around the room and, and, and talk about how different people have different uh, uh, ways to, to deal with uh, the <coughs> influx of emails in Debian. So th the motivation is, of course, as we all know, the Debian community depends heavily on emails, not only for personal communication, but they are key tools, uh, part of the infrastructures that are completely mail-based. And uh, I have seen that over time, uh, most of the Debian uh, contributors have developed their own way of, of deal with that. And on the other hand, uh, at my, uh, let's call it daytime job, uh, I, I work on machine learning and natural language processing. And for, for many, many years, there have been tons of papers coming out saying, OK, you, you can use this technique, that technique to, to improve uh, person dealing with a lot of information. Uh, interestingly, uh, th there is still not uh, that type of technology deployed on the field. And uh, something I have learned from the free software world is this concept of, well, you work much better when you actually work on something you, you want to use yourself. That's seldom the case in science, and I want to put it into test uh, by this. So here I want to share a tool I developed for my own use, and another tool that I wrote for community use, and uh, then brainstorm with people whether the tool I wrote can be useful for other people, or you know, what techniques people use and, and we c how can we improve it with uh, some uh, machine learning. Aha. So the tool I wrote is, uh, has the, the name so far of uh, Listoso Smart Mailing List Reader, but uh, the name is subject to change uh, when we come with a better name. And the tool is it's a fairly simple tool you get the emails coming in, uh, go to a, a regular mail archive in inbox format. Then you have a backend that uses Perl and mailbox thread and a um, classifier DBACL and populate a SQLite uh, database. And then a front end written in Scala and uh, a formalism called it uh, Next Tab Echo. Um, these are uh, chosen because I really wanted to use the tool and I didn't have much time. And I just went for the technology I was more familiar with and it was faster. It took me like a week to put this together. And uh, I've been using it so for, for a while now and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, although it has a number of uh, shortcomings for, for other people. But um, let's take a look how the tool uh, looks like. So here you have the DevConf Discuss uh, mailing list. And uh, here you are filtering at a particular threshold, minus 10. That means you see absolutely every email that come in, in the last week on, on DEF CON Discuss. That's uh, uh, three pages of, of emails, 140 messages. And here you have the different score assigned by the classifiers. So uh, <clears throat> for example, I don't play assassins. So even though they are not particularly bad emails, I don't really care about them so much. And uh, it seems I'm a really bad person because I don't care about lost cameras. <laughs> but uh, if I then filter, if I don't have much time to read the emails and I filter at score 1.0, then that gets reduced to 29 emails. And uh, well, I'm very interested in this open block stuff or maybe buying a Debian jacket. And so how does the classifier works? Well, when you click to see an email, then you have these buttons over there that says, well, this is an email I really like, or this is an email I really don't like. And all that stuff goes stored into the SQLite uh, database, and a uh, classifier is trained on that. This is uh, definitely not rocket science. The, the only work is behind the database, the different uh, schema stuff. I mean, a few tables with messages and threads and uh, <clears throat> how the message got predicted and stuff like that. The, most of my, my work on, on building this tool was on putting together the database uh, schema and stuff like that. And uh, the classifier itself, I'm using a, a classifier that is packed in Debian, which I have used for other projects and I highly recommend it. It's very fast, it handles emails natively, and it's, it's, it's more than just naive based classifier, it's a maximum entropy classifier. 
uh, the author actually have used it to train a program to play chess. So it's definitely not your you know, run off of the mill uh, spam detector. And the way I, I use the categories is that messages that get marked plus two or minus two are always used as uh, positive or negative train examples. And then the plus one and minus one are, are samples. So basically, if you say something is plus two, say I, I always want things like this. While something is plus one, it's like, well, it's things like this I, I like. And it also takes into account emails you saw on the, on, on the title, but you didn't even click to, to choose to open. Those are like mild negatives. And besides the classifier, I also have a, a little rule engine where you can write actually executable Perl code because I can't, don't hang out with Luciano enough about security and web apps. Uh, that uh, <coughs> you, you can write rules like saying, oh, if somebody says my name, I want this to have a plus 10. Or, or like one of the rules I have is things that come from Debian.org in, in Debian Devil mailing list and should get a little push up. Uh, that's because I don't know enough Debian developers yet. And, uh, and the UI is uh, it's, it's a really, really funny UI because it's, uh, if, if you know uh, the, the very, very old Java UI framework Swing, did somebody actually wrote something that you, you, you write code that looks like Swing and it renders an Ajax app application. And, uh, it's really, really ugly. It's not the way to do it, but it's really fast. The whole UI is 500 lines of code. <laughs> and uh, okay, so this is what I have, and uh, it uh, makes me happy. I, it, the UI still have issues. For example, I compute all the threaded structure, but I don't expose it on the UI. And there are uh, the, the main point, and, and we were just talking with uh, Avar before here, is to, to actually make it use IMAP rather than mbox files. So you can uh, glue it together with, with another. Uh, and the other things that, the, the tool as it is right now is really set up for, for the, the machines where I, I run the UI in a VM and the backend in a different machine and stuff like that. So it's not really that installable. So I, I want to work on getting a version that people can install. So that's for the one side. And the other tool I wrote is a uh, uh, 150 lines of Perl that handles uh, it's a bridge between the Debian user Spanish mailing list and Twitter. So if you subscribe to at Debian underscore ES, then you get uh, for every discussion on the mailing list that has at least three emails of which there are two different authors that helps with spam detection, uh, you get a tweet and you only get once per thread. So if you want to know what's going on on, on the mailing list, uh, for eight uh, months it has generated around uh, a thousand tweets. It's uh, not a particularly silent, but it's uh, definitely much less volume than being subscribed to the mailing list uh, and, and reading it uh, every day. And uh, so far it has got a hundred followers, which uh, I mean justifies for me just to, to keep that bot running. The, the bot is public domain. You, you can download it. Uh, f the, the link for downloading is on the on the Twitter account. In a in a more serious uh, aspect, I'm, I'm I have a personal project of trying to reproduce the kernel traffic summarization for the Linux uh, kernel mailing list. Somebody for during five years every week summarized by hand all the emails from the Linux kernel mailing list, and. Uh, so, and all those summaries are available, are a GPL, and we can use it to actually build a system that can summarize Debian Devil at that stage. Uh, I, I published a paper on that uh, a few months ago, and uh, what I'm working now is in aligning the original emails with the summary and trying to derive uh, rules of w when you want to include certain part. That, that's a very well studied problem, but here we have very good data to, to, to work on that. Uh, this will be very, very nice. You, you, you could have people who are Debian, uh, interested in Debian, not developers, and, and read a summary weekly of what's going on on Debian Devil. And uh, I mean, if, if we get to that point, I will be a very happy Pablo. Um, when I started the, the, the smart mailing list reader, people point me to this blog, and I would really like if more people write blogs like that. So Joy uh, analyze, uh, what makes in the thread structure to be an interesting thread to read. 
So for example, if you're having a thread only two people going back and forth, then that's what he called take it to private email. Or if you have the thing, if you have one person posting something and immediately replying to himself, there's a thing before you post. Or somebody posts something and then you, you don't have no discussion, you have just a ton of responses to the same. That's the blindingly obvious answer. <laughs> and uh, so I, I would like to add this type of, of identification. Yeah, we get a comment from IRC from Kevin Mark. He says, it would be cool to have something that matches the, De uh, the De De Debian Weekly News. Yep. Indeed. It would have been cooler if KBX was here, but... Uh. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's what I have. I, I, uh, so now I, I would like to know how you guys uh, deal with uh, the, the ridiculous amount of, of emails we, 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 we receive in Debian and uh, your own personal strategies. In Python Argentina, the, the mailing list has a karma button, mm -hmm. so you can say that that mail has a positive or negative karma, and it's included as a header in the, in the, in the mails in the future. I mean, when the, that machine learns and then tags automatically the mails with that karma, so you can filter by that karma. So and then people uh, used, to, used to post silly mm -hmm. things, gets mm -hmm. bad karma, and probably nobody gonna read it in the future. So do, do you are familiar with that system? Oh, I, I, I was thinking on similar lines, so yes. Uh, so, so but to, to associate the karma, you have to go to a website and click a button for that particular email, how, how it works? It's in the bottom of the... A link to, to, to say... I like it, I don't like it. Very nice. How, what, how people will feel about that? Drew is, is less uh, nice, on his, he called it cooks. He says, well, if this, if this thread has too many cook to, to, to good posters ratio, I don't read it. But that's the same bad karma. Wouldn't it be nice to have a karma system for emails that's just based on the headers? Um, two thoughts about that. So you could reply with, you could include a karma header in your reply. And that sounds like, oh, wait, but I don't necessarily want to reply to something. And then perhaps you shouldn't be judging if it's not that important that you don't want to reply. Mm -hmm. So, so, so to, to continue, the karma go for, for the person or did it goes automatically text classification on the content on the email? Um, I, uh, at least on the person, but you can, I think you can Yeah. Uh, he, he said that it's on the person, but uh, it could be re-implemented based on the text. Uh, well, one, uh, one thing that strikes me here is that, yeah, I understand for this kind of feedback, uh, the most usual interface will be web-based. However, there's this uh, cultural issue in our community that uh, we, try, uh, we tend to avoid web-based interfaces when, whenever mail-based inf interfaces are are available. So having a mail available interface to rate mails, uh, I don't know, could be strange, but uh, work uh, better with this group. Good um, point. For this type of things, we ha already have uh, spam collect all addresses that we, you can bounce spam to. So we could have positive and negative karma bounce addresses that you just bounce from whatever list on Debian, you just bounce, that's good, uh, that's bad. That's very good, yeah. And then you can have lists put some karma experimental thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I wanted to add is that um, in my experience to read many, many mails from mailing lists, a good thing is to revisit the subscriptions you have from time to time. Mm -hmm. And then somehow sometimes decide that this is not worth the time. And refraining from subscribing to every list is also a good way to having too many mails. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm starting to get a very clear picture and, and, and involves two mechanisms. Mm -hmm. One is replying with karma, and that just gives karma to the, to the thread, not to any specific person. Mm -hmm. So some kind of weight, weighted average of the karma with decay. And, but the other mechanism would be uh, rating people, and that would involve addresses where you send somebody's uh, email address to that sp special no, no, address. No, no. He, he was talking about bouncing, so there you bounce the whole email. And we can use the email text to do that, or we can use the sender. Uh, whether to, to go text-based, that it will be, as you were saying, for the whole thread, and then you can get flame words and stuff like that, 
or going for people, that's uh, most likely will involve a very nice framework. To but I, I was uh, sort of, uh, I was riffing on his idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I think it makes more sense to keep the karma regarding specific mails or threads in the thread. But the, the, uh, the special address, I think, would be very nice for uh, giving karma to people. But uh, the, 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 the reason I have this smart mailing list reader is, is because actually it's not a matter of karma. I'm interested in contributing natural language processing and machine learning stuff to a bunch of projects. So I'm not interested in everything the projects come. I'm only interested if they say something related to my field. So I'm subscribed to LibreOffice mailing list. It's a huge traffic. And most likely I'm only interested of like a, five emails a month at most. So that's not, not really that they are saying things that are bad, it's just that I don't care. So um, there's a danger with the bounce sort of stuff that people who are not currently involved can't get involved because their mails will not get read because they don't have karma. So I think this sort of thing is really personal. Mm -hmm. You should do it only on your personal machine. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be sharing the results with other people. Great. I mean, I, I, uh, I was really thinking it about something personal. And the other part is, uh, I'm tired of uh, Google knowing you know, everything I do. And the nice thing about this is uh, you, you keep all this, uh, what you read and what you didn't, uh, personal and, and. So I'm currently using Gmail for email reading. I would like to switch to this. It sounds mm -hmm. really useful, but the interface maybe needs a bit of work in terms of the threading, particularly. Uh, Getting, if I can get more people to help, I'm what not a UI guy at any point in time, as you can see. Yeah, what language did you say it was written in? This is written in Scala, but uh, cool. <laughs> no, but in reality, all you have is an SQLite database that you want to serve and, and you want to, you, you can do it in PHP, you can do it in any language you want. So you could theoretically write UI mm -hmm. in different languages and yep. do the back end, all the stuff that you have. And you can also write backends in different languages in as much as just populate the same database. So I was just thinking about the no karma for unknown people. And well, you could certainly start unknown people at some positive, I mean, be optimist. It seems like a relatively simple problem to solve. Of course, I probably missed the hard part. I, I, f I feel the karma issue is, is more like a thing that projects should discuss rather than a technology stuff. So I, I'm, I'm fine with whatever the people want to do. What, what I'm more interested is in the part of which type of technology can help. Uh, if we want to implement a karma system based on text, I definitely can help. A karma system based on senders and people, it it's doesn't need any NLP or anything like that. It's just counting. Maybe one thing to add is that uh, we are already having some sort of karma just for spam detection. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do already rank some mails below some threshold based on their content. So maybe we could extend this spam detection. I mean, basically, it's the same tools. Yeah, but karma based for community really leads you to groupthink. And to voting. Hmm? And to efficiently, well, not efficiently, but uh, executively being voting on the people who mail. Because you have more people bouncing the same mail to either yeah. positive or negative, so I has, I feel Phil has something to say. Uh, right, the, there was discussion along these lines uh, in uh, talk in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, Star Girls, um, yeah, flame war, that, flame yeah. war detection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember uh, the discussion. And uh, there was obviously nothing's been done about it since. But it seemed like there were, there were some quite good ideas that popped up around that time so that you'd uh, mechanically spot flame wars and then tag the, the message that gave rise to that flame war as being flame bait and then uh, use machine learning to spot similar messages in the future. And that if you did that, if you provoked the filter, you could put the flame bait on hold for 12 hours send a message to the sender saying, you do realize you just triggered the flame bait uh, detector. Do you want to get the bad reputation that goes with that? 
or do you want to click this link to get rid of the email and pretend it was never sent? One of the nice things is that if you get people to, to, to a, a, adapt themselves to write emails that pass, bypass the flame war filter, most probably there will be no flame war because the email will be too complicated to, to understand that <laughs> yeah. they are just flaming. And maybe another thing to add is that we ha also have some sort of mechanism to prevent flame wars in Debian that is named Listmasters. And you, any one of the readers of Debian Devil can report anyone's behavior on the list to the list masters, and they quite often react by banning for a certain amount of time. Given if you, I mean, you have to make a case and give some emails to justify that this person should be banned for some time from the mailing list because their contributions are not positive to the discussion. How, how often that happens, though? Ask them. <laughs> Like once one person per year. I think my feeling is that it's more than that. Probably more than something like around one per month. Wow. On on all lists, but I don't know. So, Phil, how do you handle emails? <laughs> Just to pick a random person. Well, at the moment, I'm not reading email because my laptop drive crashed two days before Deb Camp, and uh, I th I've been trying to repair my not much database ever since. And so I'm having a very li very relaxed Deb Camp and Deb Conf because I just haven't looked at email at all while I've been here. So I didn't know what the day trip was going to be, and <laughs> it's just great. It's uh, it's like a magical mystery job. But I normally I use not much, which is uh, just really fantastic. Um, it's not much of a mailer, um, so it's just a, a thing for indexing every mail you've got with Zapian, and then the, the, the UI that's best developed for that is based in Emacs, which will piss a lot of people off. But you can, some lunatic has done a Vim uh, version as well, so you do all your email within some mad Vim mode. Uh, you can plumb it into MUT as well. It would be quite nice if the natural language stuff you're talking about could interact with that. Okay. Uh, so the way that it works with um, with Emacs, at least, is that you can apply tags to any uh, any message. So you could have extra tags for how spammy something is. And then you can do searches across the whole text of all the emails that you've got. And you get the first 20 or so emails in about two seconds, even if you've specified quite a com complicated search with multiple tags and multiple search terms. Do you, do you actually assign tags yourself? You are the mythical person who assign tags. You assign person, it's, you have a personal database with all the tags on all the emails that you've got. But you, you, you actually tag emails, say this email tag. Well, what you normally do is uh, when you first get a new email, you have a load of rules about, mm -hmm. instead of doing proc mail rules, you have rules that say, if it's to me, then add this to me tag. Okay. And if it's uh, a list, w one of these lists, then add a list tag. And then uh, under these circumstances, remove the inbox tag so I never have to see it unless I'm searching for it. Okay. So that's the way I, I try to make it so that as few things land in my inbox, even though mm -hmm. that's actually not a folder that exists. Uh, so that those are the mails that I actually try and read. And then other mails, if someone refers to something, you can search for it really quickly and then find the thread. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when a thread keeps on coming back from the dead, like you know the Tempfest thread or uh, <laughs> or the system deep thread, I tag one of the messages in the thread as killed, mm -hmm. and then I never see that thread again, which is rather nice, very relaxing. <laughs> uh, anybody else? So just a quick follow-up. Thanks, Phil. I'm glad you like not much. Um, also, there is, for people who hate, who think that reading email in an editor is fundamentally a stupid idea, um, there is a Python-based curse in curses interface called a lot, which I know uh, puns are one of the great trials of the not much community. Um, that should be uploaded to Debian pretty soon. So it, it's nearing uh, production readiness, I guess. Uh, the tagging script I use is called a few, just so. <laughs> so you want to? 
Uh, yeah, it's kind of... Uh, so I've, I've read about Not Much a couple of times, and it sounds really good, but I've never quite worked out what it was that I had to do to get it used. So if you're the Not Much guy, that was a really useful piece of information. Because mm -hmm. So what do you use to, to, to handle the emails yourself? I just use MUT. Okay. Um, uh, and all my email lives on a server out on the net, so I get the same IMAP view of everything everywhere. It doesn't matter which machine I'm on. And how, 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 how oh, many... Except, except for at work where, of course, they've got Exchange. And so work mail just kind of goes in a bucket that I ignore, mostly. Mm -hmm. I look at it once a week and discover I've missed a meeting. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't allow IMAP in ARM until last year. We had to bitch and bitch and bitch. So now we can actually read mail, real mail. So, so how, how much time a, a, a day do you spend reading mailing lists? Most of it. Oh, OK. I don't do much apart from read and write mail. <laughs> I spent some time recently looking at um, the use of the IMAP uh, keywords for mail mm -hmm. um, instead of using folders. At, at the moment, I, I just automatically filter everything into folders with uh, proc mail. Um, and I use um, a variety of mail readers, like on my phone, um, mm. iStuff, you know, Thunderbird on a Windows machine, um, plus a web interface with squirrel mail and so I started looking at um, if I could transition from folders mm -hmm. to uh, using the keywords mm. um, there are two problems I found one was simply that not all the clients support the keywords in the same way and that was going to be a pain um, and the other problem that I found was that um, synchronizing the keyboards sorry the, the keywords um, that each client um, that I'm currently aware of needs to have a local list of the keywords mm -hmm. and you need to manually enter them into the client. So if you have a desktop and a laptop, you have to set up your list of keywords on both of them, all your custom keywords. Um, and I couldn't find any simple way to synchronize that between all my clients. Um, so that that's as far as I got. And it just seemed like I didn't have time to to go into it to actually find a solution. But the, the thing I liked about the keywords is you can have multiple keywords and you can declare um, like views basically instead mm -hmm. of folders. Um, mm -hmm. And that can provide a lot of sophistication um, for managing email and also to manage it in, in different times of the day. Like you could say during business hours, my main view might be focused on my um, mm. business email and, and outside business hours you might want to exclude business email whether it's from a folder or whether it's on your private email address or something else and, mm -hmm. and you can tune that a little bit but there are those big stumbling blocks that I mentioned before I could get to that point. So. And uh, in general uh, how do you deal with so much email for, for, for Debian in the sense of uh, on your off work hours, how, how do you manage to, to go through that? You just go and, and look at all the threads and choose to participate in some? Um, at the moment, I deal with it very selectively. So I only look at things if I'm very actively interested in a subject. So uh, when I join a list, I set up a folder for that list. I set up a rule in proc mail to mm -hmm. capture everything that I that I receive on that list and I won't even look in that folder unless I'm participating in some thread uh -huh. um, and one consequence of that is that people often have to CC me privately to, to mm -hmm. wake me up to look at something especially <laughs> if it's a, after a few days after the thread has gone quiet so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah so I mean I do something very similar to most of that um, I actually accept I use Xim rather than Procmail to do filtering. And I found one problem was that I used to filter all my Debian stuff into a Debian bucket. The problem was it was very hard to get bug mail to end up in my inbox and not in the Debian bucket because the Debian bucket didn't get looked in very often. Mm -hmm. um, and I kept failing to write a rule. So important bugs would molder for three months before I noticed that um, stuff was broken, which is kind of embarrassing. So you wanted personal emails to your Debian address so to go to your inbox, not to e your... Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> at the moment, various things broke on the server, so everything's just going to my inbox, which means <laughs> I notice things much more and actually reply, which is good, but you get 
more mail in your inbox. <laughs> that, that was something we were discussing with uh, uh, Zumbi this, uh, at breakfast, that uh, some classifier that will detect email that in a sense is, is, is uh, addressed to you, it's, it's quite important and it's not as trivial as it sounds because if you're having a conversation in a mailing list, then they are just addressed to, to the mailing list. And uh, so then you, you have to know the previous history that you, know, you, you replied or, or you started the thread. Maybe to add to the things that can be done to read mail effectively is also not really technical, rather how you manage your time. Mm -hmm. I have found several times that if you start just reading on the background your email, you end up doing nothing but just go and refresh your email to just see if by mistake something happened on some Debian mailing list. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it didn't. And five minutes later, you just try again, and oops, it didn't. And then you p spend a day long refreshing folders. So nowadays, I have the opportunity to ha commute in train. So I have 40 minutes offline. Mm -hmm. And I usually sync before entering the train and assign these 40 minutes to do this. Mm -hmm. And when I get out, then it's done or not, but it's done. And it's mostly a matter of assigning time. And just to detail my technical solution, <laughs> I have several accounts that I think using offline imap mm -hmm. and when I, they enter uh, Dovecot they are reparsed into Dovecot and filtered using sieve uh, mm -hmm. imap extension and then they're piped into, into different folders. Mm -hmm. The advantage of this is that if you don't have your computer you can go to the web mails of the source thing and they're already filtered. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite a nice solution it has some drawbacks and sometimes offline imap just crashes for one of the folders so just log in to restart it from time to time but yeah and and sieve is a, a program or a protocol sieve is actually a protocol to define filters for yeah. imap i so think which which sieve uh, program you use i use dovecot dovecot has Dovecot's something uh -huh. to do this mm -hmm. it's quite tricky because it you you have to resend the mails to dovecot when they arrive through offline imap which is quite ugly, but works. Have you? Do you have a blog post in describing your setting? Because it sounds mm, very not interesting. Not yet. <laughs> okay. uh, Rhonda, do you want to share your email life? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, over the last years, I'm more or less started to not follow emails too much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more catched up the habit of following IRC and that worked out pretty well and people are throwing pointers around anyway on IRC when there's something interesting going on in the mail so mm -hmm. that works for me most of the times. Um, I'm still a plain MUT user and have some proc mail files, uh, filters but the thing that worked out most for me is coloring mm -hmm. emails in MUT, depending on who is sending it or other reasons. Yeah, but the, what you were mentioning, we, we could uh, use uh, a bot on, on, on hash Debian Devil or, or some other channels to, to, to ac acquire interesting training data for, for email categorization. Every time somebody posts there some email, uh, some link to some email on, on the archive, then you say, okay, well, this is really newsworthy. People are talking about it. No. <laughs> so about half the time those links are posted as an example of the oh. pits of human behavior. So It's like the, people shaking their heads. Like that. It's like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe what okay. so-and-so just posted. So... Which you could also use for a bot, but yeah. you have to differentiate somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, Pops, <laughs> come on! You 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 keep track of all the Debian mentors' uh, emails. How do you do that? I think I said before that I'm using Google Mail. Okay. Just for the lists. But do you do you use the their importance uh, training system? Do you no, I skim or read every thread. How much 
time do you spend that? Way day? too much. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Again, that's also another thing that one can do besides unscribing from the mailing list is blacklist thread. Once you have spent too much time, you can just decide any contribution to this is just too much and I don't care. Mm -hmm. And then well, every mail will just be tagged as read by your mail client, so it's quite a good way to avoid noise. And avoiding noise is good because what you want is information, not noise. Um, just um, a couple of other things that come to mind. I mean, my, my system of organizing things into folders by, by list is, is not so sophisticated because y you could end up with um, you know, something important in any one of those folders and, and not know it's there. Um, and I think that, um, that email, as it stands, doesn't really give the sender a lot of options to, um, to emphasize what their um, message is. Like some messages, mm -hmm. like an invitation to a party, are probably a lot more important before the party than, than after the party. Um, so, so this would be a vital clue if, if mm -hmm. that was actually, if the email reader had some way of knowing that after a certain date this message is meaningless. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there are a lot of opportunities like that that could be explored. I mean, one option is to send calendar invites instead of regular emails, and that might fulfill some of that. But maybe there are more specific things that could be done um, you know, for things in the Debian project, particularly relating to bugs or, or other things that to help the um, recipient to prioritise because otherwise you, you just have a long list of things and you go through from start to finish. The, the issue with the... the that's, uh, that's something that could be done. Like, for example, if there's a discussion about an, a bug and the bug has been closed, then your, your email, we, we could have something that, that marks that whole thing as no longer relevant. So, so that's a very good point. And, and at least for DevConf, for example, that there is a lot of emails that are time dependent and uh, can make a big difference. I mean, just to continue that suggestion, what mm -hmm. one idea would be if I'm maintainer and I'm responding to a bug report mm -hmm. and I want to say to the, um, the bug reporter, look, I'm not going to close your bug report without consulting you. I'm giving you a week to check if I've fixed your bug. Mm -hmm. But if you don't close the bug yourself and confirm mm -hmm. you're satisfied in a week, it's going to close automatically. Mm -hmm. um, it would be nice for me to actually be able to emphasise with that email mm -hmm. that they have to act on it and then their, their email program would somehow emphasise that this is an action that they need to take rather than just a, an email for them to read. Mm -hmm. um, they can still ignore it. I mean, they're not forced to read my emails. But if it could give them an extra clue, mm -hmm. um, then that would be really helpful. And it might be more productive. Yeah, that's something that can definitely be added to uh, dead bugs. That, that you can send an email, like, like something like delayed, close, or, or something like that. OK, so do people feel they would like to, to, to help with this? Do you have some? friends that are good at making UIs. So I just wanted to mention one more not much related item, which is that we've been experimenting with sharing tags uh, for the purposes of patch tracking. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a really simple scheme, and it's not tied to not much. It's just using a, git, a shared Git repo that we push to, and then we grab those tags and, and push them into uh, the not much database. But so something along those lines, mm -hmm. m maybe with a different UI, mm -hmm. could, could be useful for, s for some of these schemes as well, where you work in a distributed manner, and people make some determination about messages, and then you do conflict resolution via, via some version control system. Now, that's a pretty techy system, so, so it depends how techy of a system you're willing to tolerate. But 
it seems to work okay for us. Mm, sounds, sounds good, particularly if those, some of those tags can also be assigned automatically. Okay, so I guess we'll be finishing a little earlier. Thank you so much for coming in spite of the rain and uh, look forward for DevConf 13 with some better solutions, hopefully put all together.